Billsthorpe pit has been producing coal for 60 years, nearly all of it now for power stations. But today, Billsthorpe is on the map for quite another reason, because it could be the site of the first power station of its kind in the world. This project will use a major breakthrough in coal burning technology, supply the public via the national grid, be privately financed in a way not often used in the UK, and still be dedicated to a deep mine. All of which make the Billstop project unique. Its success will depend on the mine's success. That's why it's another first, the first time in the British coal industry that the union and everyone who works in the pit will be offered the chance to invest and own a part of the power station. Power station building for 40 years now has been all about building larger and larger plants. With electricity privatisation, the government has made it clear that it wants new, small, independent generators as quickly as possible alongside the two big companies, that's National Power and Power Gen. Billsthorpe is an excellent site. We like the pit and at the root of it we trust the men to work out a good deal. So, it could be built here. The proposed station would be 150 megawatts, only 7% of the size of West Burton B, so it's clearly no substitute. But Jim Harrison of the Coal Research Establishment says it will be just as efficient. The new technology is circulating fluidized bed combustion, in which coal is mixed with limestone and burnt in suspension using jets of air. In this uh, process, the limestone fixes the sulphur in the coal in the form of ash, and because it operates at low temperature, the emission of nitrous oxide is very much reduced. The benefits of the technology are that it will uh, allow stations to be built more cheaply, it will allow coal of uh, high ash and high chlorine to be, to be burnt, and it uh, will fix the sulphur and the nitrogen so we have a, a low SOX, low, low NOx system. Does that mean then that it's environmentally friendly? This is a, a very environmentally acceptable process. About 50 of these power stations are operating or being built around the world, mostly in the US, so the technology is well understood. The plant proposed for Billsthorpe will learn from the experience of the others. It will be one of the largest of its type, matched only by one just commissioned in Colorado and two others under construction in New Mexico and Hawaii. It'll cost around £120 million, and none of that will come from the government. All of it will be raised from investors, because coal power at Billsthorpe will be a normal limited company. The plan is that British coal will probably have most of the shares, but won't control the company. East Midlands Electricity would have a large holding, and shares would also go to the contractor, who will build and operate the plant, and some financial institutions as well. Together, these shareholders will find about £20 million of the money needed. The rest, £100 million, would be raised from a group of British and international banks. Normally, when you borrow money from a bank for a business, you have to put up some separate security. It's, it's called collateral, and it can be your own house, if necessary. Loans for the Billsthorpe project are, are of a different sort. They're called non-recourse loans. And that means that the shareholders um, in the new company don't put up any separate security for the loan the, or give any guarantees so that if the company somehow fails to repay its debts at a future stage, then all the bank can do is to take possession of the plant and obviously if uh, the, the failure is being due to a failure of one of the contractors to perform properly, to buy the power, to supply the coal or to operate the plant properly, then uh, the, the bank can sue them for, for recompense. But that's all. One company which could be involved in raising the money for the project is GE Capital. George Schaefer explains how his company views a project like this. Financial packages like this are very common throughout the world, particularly in the United States. However, they're new here in the United Kingdom, and this will be one of the first projects financed in this manner in the United Kingdom. 
However, institutions from all over the world are looking at investments that are well structured where they can be certain that they'll be getting their money back because the contracts and the people backing the contracts will live up to their obligations. And so we're looking to structure a deal with the minimum of risk to be sure that we'll be repaid the money that we invest in this project. So, not surprisingly, asked to lend £100 million for a long time without security, the banks will be looking for real reassurance about the three main contracts which will make the venture a success. The contract to design, build and operate the power station has just gone out to tender because British Coal need a decision to go ahead by the end of the year. It's highly desirable to get a commitment towards the end of this year or early next because if we're successful in doing that then the Billsthorpe power contract can become one of the initial designated contracts and that's of great value to the project for years to come but to achieve this requires a truly immense amount of work. That's why the contractor will not only have to build the station for a stated sum but design it and operate it afterwards to a required standard of efficiency and availability. This way, any risk is reduced to the minimum. It will take three months to tender, and it will cost around £150,000 for the contractor just to prepare the tender. The second contract is the power purchase agreement with East Midlands Electricity. Yes, British Coal is our biggest customer, and we're very impressed with what the Knox bids have done over the last few years. And we feel our part will be to buy a part of the shares in the company and to buy the output of the power station over a 15-year period. Uh, we want to um, be very much involved in the project and we will be equity holders and taking an active part in the success of the scheme. Which leaves the third contract, the contract to supply the coal that's needed. The potential benefits to the pit are clear, a long-term contract for at least a third of its output right on its doorstep. The rest will still go to the local power stations, but having regular demand right here on the site will mean far less exposure to the ups and downs of the big stations. What makes coal power at Billsthorpe a really good idea is that the coal will come straight out of the pit into its own power station without paying any transport costs. Billsthorpe power station would add value to Billsthorpe coal right at the pit head, and the coal industry can now share in that added value. The value of the electricity it would produce would be about three times the cost of the coal going in. Out of that difference, it's necessary to pay for building the plant, that £100 million of